Hey everyone, hope you had a fantastic Thanksgiving, but today is the day after Thanksgiving. You know what that means. 10% site-wide deal at sadgirlapparel.com. Make sure to use code CHILL at checkout. Get your Christmas sweaters, get your gifts for your friends and family. You know they're gonna want a sweater or, or a beanie or, or a pin or something fancy. Get them something good, all right? Go, go there now, use code CHILL. Now watch the video. Hello everyone. I'm tired and I woke up sick, but boy, do I want to talk about a shitty decom. Now, there's a lot of decoms out there, and let's be real, a lot of them are garbage. Okay, I mean, what do you good. expect with Disney kind okay, of pumping good. out a couple of them a year? <laughs> that's enough fucking slut! But one of the worst, nay, possibly the worst decom I've ever seen in my entire life is none other than Hatching Pete. Now, I know a lot of you probably missed this one, or at least I did. Now, I do remember seeing the commercial for Hatching Pete, but I never really got to watching it. But to be fair, I was in that transition stage, you know, where I was stop watching the kid Disney stuff and upgrading to cool badass stuff like Yu Yu Hakusho and Futurama. But this movie, just by the premise alone, is just something else. It's one of the laziest and dumbest concepts I've seen for any movie. It's basically a movie about a kid who is a mascot. One day he started getting allergic to the mascot costume, says, hey bro, you think you could take over for a day? No one will know it's you. So his friend takes over, his friend does a couple flips, does this number, and every girl in the school wants to bang the chicken. Not even exaggerating. Faucets. Faucets of water falling out of their holes. But this movie's that basic decom trope where they take something nerdy and that people would consider to be loser stuff, and then they make a movie about it. Be like, see guys, it could be cool too. A good example of that's like High School Musical. You know, theater stuff's nerdy and then they make it look cool. But in this case, it's just stupid. This movie doesn't make a single ounce of sense. And just to give an example, the basketball team that he's the mascot for hasn't scored a single point all year. And whenever his friend takes over and does a couple flips and makes fun of the coach, the team that couldn't score a point ends up beating the best team in the league. Yeah, pride. High, high school pride. Oh yeah, also something else. The mascot steals the sheriff's vehicle and they let him off scot-free because they want to know who the mascot is. It's just a giant mess. Also something else I want to mention. This movie could have ended 30 minutes in. Boom, bam. Would have been over. Not even lying. Me and my wife thought the movie was over 30 minutes in. But boy, Boy, it just kept going and going. Oh, now I know a lot of people probably believe Mitchell Musso's career ended when he got that DUI, but baby, let me tell you something. It was this movie. It was this movie. But before we get into this movie, don't you guys want some snacks? Boxu makes a perfect and memorable gift for anyone in your life who appreciates Japanese snacks and culture, especially during a time where people aren't able to travel as easily as they want. And on top of the amazing gift of Japanese snacks, if you subscribe to Boxu, you get your chance to win a free ticket to Japan. They will be picking five lucky winners to win a set of free tickets to Japan. And if you subscribe before December 31st, you automatically get entered baby. So if you guys want some amazing Japanese snacks while at the same time getting the opportunity to win free tickets to Japan, please use code Bionic and subscribe to Boxu. My code will get you up to 10% off of your subscription. Don't miss out on this unique opportunity that ends on December 31st. Come on, do it. Now, so how the movie starts out is Cletus is the mascot, and the whole beginning is just everyone being like, wow, you freaking suck, you stupid, dumb mascot. And then Cletus is like, oh man, I can't do, I can't do anything right. I can't even be a mascot correctly. And it's just him being clumsy, falling over, doing stupid stuff, the crowd throwing shit at the mascot. And then we meet Pete Ivy, who's basically like the invisible kid who no one pays attention to. He even walks up to a teacher, says, hey, you know where this girl is? And she's like, do you even go to this? school. You're going inside? I'm sorry, are you a new student here at Brewster High? A little bit on the nose with the uh, invisible kid idea, but yeah, whatever. And then we find out that Cletus and Pete are best friends, and Pete is trying to ask Cletus' sister out. Ooh, 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 some early romance. So this part is really confusing. So they're at a game, and, you know, they're doing the mascot shit, the band's on the court, and the cheerleaders are on the court doing their stuff, and Pete just kind of walks in the center of the court to go ask Cammy out. Like, they're in the middle of a cheer routine and he just walks out on the court. Hey, hey, Cammy. Hey. It's just really awkward. And then we have the basic awkward interaction of a, a dude trying to ask out a girl. Hey, I was just, um, yeah, I was just wondering if, if you. <laughs> Pain. 
insane. And then the captain of the basketball team comes over. He's like, yo, I'm dating Cammy. We're, we're dating you, loser. And dear God, uh, Jason Dolly, who is the actor playing Pete, his awkwardness is just awful. But anyway, Cletus being the mascot, like he doesn't really do anything bad. Like he just sneezes a couple times because uh, in the future we find out he's allergic to the chicken suit. But like he doesn't do anything bad. Like, it's, it's not like he's ruining stuff or breaking things or like causing problems. He's just being a mascot and everyone hates him, which is why the next part makes so little sense. So anyway, Cletus and Pete start chatting and Pete's like, bro, I want to date your sister so freaking bad, bro. I, I want your sister so freaking it back. And yeah, that's the last thing we ever hear about uh, Cletus's sister. Like how the movie starts, it, it kind of implies like, oh, he's going to be going after his sister. Like that's his goal. But the thing is, you never see his sister again. She's kind of just forgotten. But anyway, Pete goes home. He's all like depressed and sad. And his dad's like girl problems. We're having some girl problems, son. Yeah, dad. Yeah, girls don't like me, dad. And then his dad's like, you got to get their attention, son. You got to do something crazy to get their attention. Foreshadowing. So anyway, Cletus tells Pete, hey, uh, I'm I'm having allergic reactions to the chicken costume and I'm dying inside of it. Please, can you take over for a day? And then uh, reluctantly, Pete's like, sure, whatever, I'll do it. And then Cletus talks about his uh, family history with being the mascot, how his granddad and his granddad's granddad, etc., were all uh, mascots of this school, which is kind of funny in an ironic way. And I want to admit the only good character throughout this movie, the only one that made me laugh is Brian Stepanek's uh, Coach Mackey. To be fair, him as an actor, he's always made me laugh in, in a lot of roles he's played, but he does a great job as the coach. So Pete ends up going to the game and for some reason, Pete's parents are, just have some rooster pride, I guess, and they go to the game too. But anyway, how it starts out is Pete, you know, kind of being awkward. He ends up getting knocked down by a freaking basketball player and cheerleader start laughing at him the crowd starts laughing at him he's like man this is this sucks man so this part makes absolutely no sense so he's like i'm gonna keep my pride i'm getting out of here he ends up getting hit in the back of the head with a basketball and gets knocked down all right after him saying he wants to keep his pride and leave he gets knocked down again he gets laughed at again and then he goes oh i'm gonna give these girls something to notice wasn't he literally walking out because everyone was laughing at him and then people laugh at him more and then he comes back and also the the thing that doesn't make sense again is the fact that he's looking at two different girls who isn't even Cletus's sister, who was supposed to be the girl that he wanted to impress, that he wanted to get her attention. Yet he's looking at a girl that we haven't even seen throughout the movie, and then another girl that Cletus was hitting on, but not even his sister. So then, how he starts getting the crowd to uh, like him is he does this. And love it dude and then he starts making fun of the coach like you know doing what the coach is doing and people are laughing and then because he gets mad at the mascot they end up throwing out the coach all of this makes no sense but the crowd's loving it so whatever so Cletus and Pete go to school next day and everyone's like hyping up Cletus like Bro, that was so sick last night. How you did this? That was so fucking sick, bro. Which is confusing how everyone in the school is talking about it, yet there was barely anyone at the game. So anyway, the basketball players and the coach don't like the mascot off the bat because the mascot ended up getting the coach thrown out, which again, makes absolutely zero sense. So Cletus ends up getting roughed up by the basketball players a little bit. So then not exaggerating, all of the cheerleaders are horny for Cletus. The girl at the beginning beginning of the movie that Cletus was trying to hit on and was grossed out by Cletus in the mascot costume now is horny for him because Pete did this. This is all it takes, ladies and gentlemen. So anyway, Pete ends up getting on the float committee with Angela, who is just a random girl that we have not met yet. I guess she's a new girl in school. We still don't know where Cammy is. You know, the girl that Pete is obsessed with, the girl that Pete has been talking about constantly, she's just gone. Just poof, disappeared. But the school is so hyped about the mascot and Pete's performance that Cletus is literally standing up doing performances of him just saying cockadoodle do it lunchtime and people are cheering for him. What is this school? What universe is this? So not only that, Pete and Angela are on the float committee to make the float for the parade for the school. And because of Pete's performance, him doing this, they're going to make a float dedicated to him, to the chicken. Okay. Well, well, it seems to me like everyone likes the chicken. So why don't we 
try to use him somehow. They are literally making a shrine to the chicken for doing one of the... I'm not going to get over it, dude. I'll never get over this. So throughout the movie, Pete kind of bounces back and forth every scene. So Pete is noticing, oh, Cletus is getting all this attention, and Pete wants attention. That's like what his whole goal was, is to get attention. And Cletus, even though Pete kind of wants that attention, is like, hey, show me the moves you're doing, and you're going to keep doing the chicken so I get all the popularity. And Pete just being nice is like, okay, fine. I'll I'll just do it and you can get the attention, even though Pete wants the attention. Remember that. Pete wants the attention. It's just going to go back and forth throughout the movie. So anyway, Pete is doing the second game and then we get a really awkward, weird moment where he's looking at two girls. He's looking at Angela and he's looking at Jamie. He's not looking at Cammy, the girl who apparently he's obsessed with, who we haven't seen at all. He looks at Angela in the chicken costume and says, damn girl, you look, you get cuter every day and literally just picks her up and just takes her out in the hallway and gives her a flower. <laughs> like, which doesn't make any sense because if he likes Angela and he's taking her out there, she is calling him Cletus the entire time and they gives her a flower. Obviously, she's going to think it's Cletus and he gets confused about this later on. So then, like I said before, Pete flip flops. He talks to Cletus and says, you know what? Maybe I shouldn't take off the costume because I'm just boring old Pete. If I take off the head and everyone sees us me, no one's going to care. So I'm just going to keep doing this and that that's it and then later on uh, he flip flops again and something i want to mention angela has a boyfriend i just want you to be aware of this throughout a angela has a boyfriend just just preemptively okay so anyway pete and angela start talking and then she starts asking about cletus being like i mean he's a cool guy right she literally starts getting obsessed with the chicken costume starts falling for the chicken not for cletus but she's falling for the chicken and she thinks it's cletus so she starts asking yeah, he's a cool guy right you know like like maybe maybe you could set me up even though i have a boyfriend and you have a boyfriend so i forget that oh right? Yeah, 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 of course. So Pete starting to like this girl, even though, you know, Cammy uh, was the girl he's obsessed with and she doesn't exist anymore. Instead of just telling her that he's a chicken now, see, the movie could be over. 30 minutes in, this could be the end of the movie right now. Just tell her you're the chicken, you date her, movie over. But we got to keep going back and forth with freaking Pete. So this is where shit starts getting really stupid with the basketball team. So the basketball team already doesn't like the chicken. So the makeup for the fact that the team doesn't like the chicken, the chicken starts cheering them on and getting the crowd to cheer them on and then they just start playing good because the crowd's cheering better even though in the beginning of the movie the crowd was cheering but now the crowd is cheering again and they just start playing better because the chicken's doing it it's the power of the chicken and they scored 20 points a team that has never scored a point has scored 20 points and it just gets worse and then we get some drama going on where pete could either save uh, angela or jamie and jamie's the girl that cletus likes and obviously he ends up saying angela and since jamie thinks cletus is in there she gets mad at cletus you know drama drama mondays and then not exaggerating, Angela goes up to Cletus and Cletus literally tries to kiss her. Pete has to pull his hair back so he doesn't kiss her. He literally tries to kiss her when Cletus is wanting to go out with Jay. It's such a fucking mess, dude. Like Cletus is just a fucking terrible friend. He is an awful friend. He is taking all the credit for everything Pete's doing and he is trying to kiss the girl that Pete wants to date. Also, where is Cletus' sister? Where did she go? So I'm confused because Cletus mentions that he's still talking up Pete to his sister, yet where is his sister? His sister's supposed to be a cheerleader. Where is she? I don't understand. Why are they even mentioning her? She doesn't exist anymore. So again, Pete starts being like, I don't know, man, Cletus. Maybe, maybe we should stop all this. Maybe I should tell everyone about me, you know? And literally not even exaggerating, within the next scene, Cletus goes up to him and he's like, oh, my dad keeps hyping me up, saying I'm the best mascot ever. I feel like a fraud. You know what? We should quit this. You're right. We should quit this. And then Pete 
just doesn't want to now within a scene within like a day he can get the girl he can get the attention he can literally get everything but instead he's like no no no, i changed my mind again for like the 10th time so anyway he tells cletus hey let's wait till after the parade and then we can release that i'm the chicken and obviously that's going to be a lie so he can extend the movie for another 30 minutes so then we have the parade and then we have the float and we get uh mitchell musso's music number with the chicken dancing, then that's cool. You guys remember when Mitchell Muso used to make music? No? Anyone? And then we get literally the dumbest and lazy way of showing that, oh, Cletus isn't in the costume. So Cletus is wearing a disguise in the crowd, and one of the cheerleaders grabs Cletus. They were trying to grab a random member of the audience, and instead they just grab Cletus, who is like in the back of the crowd, and grab him just so we can have a plot point of his mustache falling off and people being like, oh my goodness, he's not in the chicken costume. So instead of Pete just being like, hey, you know what? We're caught. Let's take off the head. Let's just tell everyone, whatever. He steals the sheriff's car and drives away. I don't even know what to say. So anyway, Jamie breaks up with Cletus. Cletus ends up getting uh, detained so he can be questioned about the chicken. Pete gets away with stealing the sheriff's car. He ends up getting in a conversation with Angela and she's like, uh, who do you think the chicken is? You're like, uh, I don't know. He's like, I mean, the magic's in the mystery, isn't it? Just remember that line because it comes up later. So then uh, they have another basketball game and it's like the biggest crowd ever because they're all waiting for the chicken to come back, which doesn't make any sense. But anyway, Pete is actually sitting out in the crowd the chicken doesn't show up and basically the entire audience just leaves because they only care about the chicken they don't care about the basketball team <laughs> the principal ends up talking with the coach and says you know all those charges with you know how the chicken stole the sheriff's card yeah uh, if the chicken shows himself we're gonna drop all those charges because we just want to know who the chicken is that bad he could literally grand theft auto and be fine so then they gather all the students out in the football field say hey if the chicken dude stands up right now then we guarantee that you will not be arrested and everything will be fine so pete's like yeah i'm gonna do this i'm gonna stand up i'm gonna do it then he stands up but the bell rings right when he stands up how convenient and everyone else stands up so no one knows that it's him so this is proof that he is ready to show everyone that he's the chicken but he changes his mind again then the chicken goes on a live high school talk show you know as pete with a voice changer which it's like literally anyone could just walk up and just take off his head and boom, bam, it's over. I mean, he literally stole a car. I think everyone has the right to do that. And then in the chicken costume, Pete says, mm, I don't think I'm going to release that I'm the chicken, even though he was literally ready to earlier. He's like, mm, the magic's in the mystery. And then Angela's like, oh, wait, Pete said that earlier. Oh, my God, it's Pete. And then Pete talks to Cletus and he's like, yeah, you know, you know yeah, I, I, I probably shouldn't show myself, even though I was ready to show myself myself in front of everyone you know no i don't feel like it anymore no we got to keep this movie going a little bit longer so i gotta i gotta keep going back and forth and then cletus is like you know you could stay in your shell forever or you can hatch what are we some kind of hatching pete <laughs> So anyway, they have their final game, you know, biggest crowd they've ever had, hoping the chicken will show up. And then Pete does end up showing up and they are facing the greatest basketball team in the league. All right. Greatest basketball team in the league. They've only scored 20 points their entire career. And since Pete in the chicken costume showed up, they ended up winning the fuck game and then at the end of the game uh everyone's like chicken take off your head and then angela goes over and like, i knew it was you pete the whole time and then the crowd goes wild woo man that was a pain to sit through holy shit there you have it ladies and gentlemen one of the worst movies i have witnessed it was such a pain to sit through this for something that was so fickle and stupid but i hope you enjoyed this video if you enjoyed this video please make sure to cluck that that uh, like button and to cluck that subscribe button. You probably have left by now, haven't you? Also, follow me on Twitter and uh, Instagram. Um, cock a doodle do it. Bye. Faucets of water falling out of their holes.